My name is Duff Dura. I'm uh, Jerry Lee Dura from Ruble, Mississippi. I was born in Memphis, raised in Ruble. I live out here about two miles out of town uh, on the Sunflower River. I, I always said, you know, painting's uh, my day job and, and playing music's my night job, but uh, it's not always that simple. Well, when I was younger, we loved riding to the gin in that cotton trailer, you know, and hanging at the gin and watching those seeds come down. And of course, for me, uh, kind of a daydreaming kid, I could just stand there in front of those seed separators and just, I mean, I don't know how long I'd be there until somebody yanked me off. Well, I was always a pencil freak as a kid. I loved pencils. I was always drawing and uh, smell them. I could sometimes when I get a new pencil, I could just bite that eraser off and eat it, you know. But I remember my mama saying, one of her sayings was, don't break your arm patting yourself on the back. And so I remember mama, every time somebody would say something about my drawing, she'd say, well, Jerry draws real well. He draws real well. I graduated high school. In 1970, I uh, went to Delta State that next fall, and I majored in art there, majored in uh, painting and drawing. I really, uh, after a couple of years, at, uh, about three years at Delta State, I um, just felt like I needed to uh, go major in rock and roll for a while, and, and so I took off and dropped out of school. The famous jumping nanny job began to sing. First time. I ever picked up a guitar, it was pretty horrible. It took me a year or two to get the chords and kind of get rolling. And, and Back then, there were other guitar players around, so I got some older guitar players to show me some stuff. I was in the School of Hard Knocks for a long time. I was living in Nashville. The phone was just starting to ring for me. And my grandfather on the Marlowe side got real sick. And I thought, well, you know, my granddad is going to die or something. So I moved back to Rural in 75. And my granddaddy actually lived five more years. I had asked my granddaddy about this place. And he, he told me, if you work it, you can have it. This was a old sharecropper shack, four square rooms front porch, back porch. There was a, a cotton house out there, which is a little cypress house that you store cotton in. A Johnny house. Over here was a little barn. You know, it, it was kind of in need of repair. <laughs> and I wasn't very good at construction, but me and my buddies were real good at destruction. So we went to tearing stuff up, and pulling out beams and you know, uh, first thing we did, we built us a bar in there, you know, because we were big party animals then. Well, uh, Jim Fish, Mickey from Marigold, he was already kind of a musical compadre of mine. Then we met this kid. We were at this club called the Mattress Factory in Cleveland. And uh, we met this guy who was too young. He was underage to be in that club. He was singing pretty decent. But his heart playing was, was pretty awful, but he was just making a hell of a noise, and uh, that was Charlie Jacobs. I went down the road, and it stopped in Fanny Bay. Had to go back and tell him what the boyfriend say. Don't start me talking. I'll tell everything I know. So I played bass, we had Fish on piano, we had Bob Barbie on drums, and that was the beginning of the tangents. This turned into a monster band. Uh, 
I don't know what we did for Mississippi, but we, uh, you know, we were into having a good time. We were into the gig, the party, the next girl, you know what I mean? We didn't think about uh, the Tangents weren't a recording band. We made a few tapes along the way, but we weren't a real focused uh, on success type group. The Tangents playing in Jackson down there tonight, it is there today and tonight. As, that's George Street Grocery Club. The, the Tangents were like a band of brothers and, and, and a dream realized too because, uh, you know, if there's anything I miss, it's that camaraderie, us against the world, you know. You know, Charlie Jacobs uh, died in 97 and uh, that was a big lick. It kind of gave me a wake-up call, and uh, I met a friend of mine at the funeral home when Charlie died, and he and he, he looked at me and said, there but for the grace of God go you and me. And I didn't really know what he meant by that, but, you know, Charlie's death, his funeral, the whole big deal was a, uh, it was like a dream, you know. It didn't become real to me till much later. In January of the next year, uh, my wife had a brain aneurysm, my wife Debbie, and she died. And that my kids were like 10 and 12. I, I'm, I learned not to wallow in self-pity. You know, back in the old days, I could sit there with a drink or a beer and listen to those old sad songs and just wang, wang, wang over and over, you know. But uh, what I learned over the years is that life goes on and, uh, and God never closes the door that he doesn't open another one. Uh, it was tough on my kids. It was really tough and still is. In the 90s I went back to school and sort of picked back up and got my little BFA and uh, so I've been painting pretty steady since then. Duff was a lot more serious when he came back, at, you know, when he was 40. And he really had not grasped the color concept that I was teaching when he was younger. He wasn't there long enough. But he was really enthusiastic and he became a very good uh, practitioner of the uh, light and color language that I taught. And I said, Duff, you got two talents. You got music and you got art. I said, pursue your music and continue your art and don't worry about it. I got you know, back in touch with my, my old church, uh, my old Sunday school teacher. I had a little gospel group, uh, and we went over and did their radio show, uh, Thacker Mountain Radio, a couple of years later, and we were a big hit on the radio show, and, uh, and so I kept being a guest on there, and uh, you know, as it turned out, I ended up being in their Three, house band. Two, one. I certainly became a more of a spiritual guy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, all my life I was, um, I, I've been looking for something, you know, musically or, or otherwise. Uh, and I always assumed it would be in Memphis or Hollywood or New York or England. You know, but when I look at the music I love, you know, the roots of the great American music is right here, man. Right down this road, you know. Charlie Patton lived three miles from here. This stuff was right under my nose. And as a kid, I didn't know it. 
My idea of success when I was younger was a real selfish idea of, of what I thought was a success. You know, uh, I thought if I made a lot of money or if I was in a, a group that got recognition and, and uh, had hit records and all this, that would be success. But now, you know, I sort of make my living by uh, drawing on my dreams. I draw on them for my music and, uh, and, and in my art, you know, I'm kind of in the dream world when I do some of that. Uh, the best of it, I think. And uh, painting the landscape in the Delta, uh, looking at the clouds, it takes me back to the dream world when I was a kid. I do love this land, uh, but now instead of looking out the window and just daydreaming, I look at the landscape and I see the warms and the cools. Uh, you know, I, I look for something that I can grab a hold to that I can, that I can define. You know, Mr. Britt used to say uh, all the time that uh, uh, the God's world is so big and so full of beauty. If our little pea brains can comprehend one little fraction of it, then we've done something. And, and I see what he means today. My little pea brain is trying. Me and you through the year The world we knew has disappeared The mom and pops, the drive-in movie show Country stores of tin and wood Open doors in a neighborhood They're long gone but the big store stands alone Chill me to the bone Everybody needs a dream To keep from waking up so mean Will or scream Everybody wants to ride Wake up on the other side In 